Each day within the United States, there are over 1.2 million shipments of hazardous materials, or hazmat. A wide variety of flammables, corrosives, and toxic materials are packaged and transported by tank trucks, rail cars, aircraft, and container vessels. Hazardous materials account for over 28% of all freight tonnage shipped on our waterways each year. And there's over 2.3 million miles of gas and liquid pipelines that wind through our metropolitan, urban, and rural settings. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, every year over 3.1 billion tons of hazmat shipments travel through densely populated areas of our nation and through your jurisdictions. Most shipments arrive at their final destination safely and without incident. But incidents will occur, and the time and place will be as unknown to you as will the type of transport vehicle involved and the properties of the hazmat it will be transporting. Your safe and swift corrective actions can limit or prevent harm to people, property, the environment, and yourself. Failure to respond correctly could be catastrophic. The Emergency Response Guidebook, or ERG, is your key resource for guidance to the safest approach and response in the initial phase of an incident, where every minute can influence the outcome. This video presentation is for responders who are either unfamiliar with the ERG or are looking to learn more about the basics of using the guidebook. This video instruction will familiarize you with the contents of the ERG as well as how to navigate its pages. It's important to note that viewing this DVD is not a substitute for personal, hands-on learning that will enable you to become proficient at accessing what you will need in an emergency. The ERG will help you interpret information about an unknown material, its potential behavior, and the appropriate actions to take in an emergency. It is your responsibility, as a first responder, to protect yourself and the public during the initial phase of an incident. Your knowledge of the guidebook before going into a hazmat incident can save lives. The Department of Transportation is responsible for the safe and secure transportation of hazmat. The ERG encapsulates all the hazard identification communication links that are required by law. It is the responsibility of manufacturers, shippers, and transporters to use a system of labels, placards, markings, and shipping papers on all materials and transport vehicles. OSHA standards provide that the first line of hazard communication and responsibility begins with the producer of the product. All manufacturers must communicate the hazards of the product they create. Most often, this information comes in the form of a material safety data sheet. The manufacturer is obligated to ensure the safe management of the product for the duration of its existence from cradle to grave. The shipper of the product is required to provide a shipping document based on Department of Transportation regulations, an emergency response telephone number that is monitored at all times when the hazmat is in transportation, a hazard class or division number, four-digit ID number, and a shipping name. And finally, the transporter is the steward for the safe movement of the material. They're required to provide you with the proper shipping paper, as well as to ensure that the transport vehicle displays the accurate placard for the hazmat. In some cases involving international intermodal containers, an orange panel for material identification may be present with or without a placard. Your correct usage of the ERG is the final, most vital link in this interdependent framework. Before we discuss how the ERG is organized, let's give some context to the use of the ERG. Let's talk about some real possibilities that exist for you when approaching an unknown hazmat scene. In Ludwig Benner's General Hazardous Materials Behavior Model, a container of material is stressed in three ways, thermally, mechanically, or chemically. When stressed, it most likely will breach and release its contents, engulfing anything in its pathway. 
Never underestimate the possibilities when dealing with chemical reactions. In this instance, the letter P next to the ERG's guide number would have informed you that the product may polymerize if subjected to high heat or if contaminated. According to Benner's model, risk assessment must begin at a distance. When arriving at a hazmat incident, your first responsibility is to keep yourself and the public safe. Resist rushing in. Position yourself upwind, uphill, or upstream from the hazard. And stay clear of all vapors, fumes, smoke, and spills. On the day when you are called to the next hazmat accident, the goal is that you are ready. Understanding the content and organizational layout of the ERG is where we will begin. All the information you need on how and when to use the ERG can be found in the opening white pages. Various sections in the ERG's white pages have been expanded or revised in the newest 2012 edition to include the Criminal Terrorist Use of Chemical, Biological, Radiological Agents section. Anytime you look up a hazmat in the ERG, you will begin with either the yellow pages or blue pages. Those pages will guide you directly to the center of the book where the orange guides are located. The orange section is ultimately where you want to end up in the ERG. It contains the information you need in order to respond. If you find the four-digit ID number first, from the placard or from the shipping document, then you will go to the yellow pages and look up that number numerically. The orange guide number will be in the column beside it. In this case, orange guide 128 will give you the information that you need. If you find the name of the material first, which can be found on package markings or on the shipping paper, then you will go to the blue pages and look up that name alphabetically to find the orange guide number. And again, we see it leads us to orange guide 128. It's important to read the full name of the material. For example, if you were to look up arsenic, you need to know whether it is arsenic bromide, arsenic chloride, or another arsenic variation. This will keep you from going to the incorrect guide. The orange guides are the core of the emergency response guidebook. In the orange guides, you will find three major areas, potential hazards, public safety, and emergency response. Each orange guide number is for a group of materials with similar chemical and toxicological characteristics. The key to using the ERG is applying the data points we will be discussing to get you to this orange section. Once you have the proper guide for the material you are confronted with, then you have corrective actions to put into effect until qualified personnel can arrive and assist you. In the crucial moments when the identification of the material is completely unknown, you could be the only responder on a scene for an extended period of time. You will need to use any and all available visual identification clues to safely approach the scene. Again, risk assessment must begin at a distance. In the very best case scenario upon arriving on an incident, you will have the shipping paper available to you with the necessary pieces of information you need to react immediately and decisively. Most often, there will be only parts of the information available depending upon the nature of the incident, the appearance of colored smoke, a vapor cloud, or people who collapse with no apparent cause may be your very first clue to the presence of hazmat. The shape of the container can be another clue visible at long range to indicate a vehicle carrying hazmat. As a last resort, you could use the road and rail car information chart in the white pages. As you get closer, you may be able to see only the color of a placard or other markings on the vehicle. So, in cases where you can advance no further, you can still locate an orange guide for response instructions even if you only have the vehicle shape or the color of the placard. 
Each advance towards the scene will add critical data points that will take you from an unknown situation towards an orange guide, which leads you to safety and corrective actions instructions. The more thoroughly you understand how to use the Emergency Response Guidebook, the more you can significantly influence the successful outcome of an event. Your ability to assess the situation, identify the hazards, secure the scene, and begin using the ERG to inform your corrective action decisions after placing a call for assistance is imperative. If you see a placard with no words, there will be a hazard class number at the bottom. Reference the placards page and then go to the corresponding orange guide for instructions. For a complete listing of hazard classes, see page 4 in the white pages. You also may occasionally see a double orange panel. The top is used on some intermodal bulk containers and is referred to as the hazard identification code. And below that is your four-digit identification number. In a rescue situation, you must always weigh and measure risks before acting. Whenever possible, use binoculars to survey the hazard. The ERG will be your tool to assess those risks before rushing into a scene. The Emergency Response Guidebook is a guidance resource to approach and secure the incident safely, identify the level of hazard, and obtain help by calling in the incident according to your agency's protocols. In the absence of any information, placards, shipping papers, or container markings, you can always go to Guide 111, the very first guide in the orange pages. And only as a last resort, use the road and rail car information. When provided with the shipping paper from a transporter, find the product name and proceed to the blue pages in order to get to the orange guide. Remember, any knowledge the transporter may have could prove to be extremely helpful and save time. Throughout the blue and yellow pages, you'll notice many highlighted entries. These highlighted materials indicate that the material is a toxic inhalation hazard, or a TIH. Once you realize you are dealing with a TIH material, the green pages will provide you with an annex to several tables, including Table 1, initial isolation and protective action distances, Table 2, water reactive materials that produce toxic gases, and Table 3, initial isolation and protective action distances for different quantities of six common TIH gases. The gases featured in Table 3 include ammonia anhydrous, chlorine, ethylene oxide, hydrogen chloride, hydrogen chloride refrigerated liquid, hydrogen fluoride, and sulfur dioxide. A How to Use Table 3 also is added and can be found on page 352. When identifying the appropriate isolation zone for the nature of the TIH material you've encountered, pay close attention to notations regarding variables that influence the situation, whether it is day or night, the differences between a large or small spill, and wind direction. Also in the green pages, you'll find Table 2, which lists materials that produce TIH gases when spilled in water. The ramifications of quantity will greatly affect the isolation and evacuation distance guidance. Be aware that vapors may be channeled in valleys or buildings. Note also that all distances are given in meters, feet, kilometers, and miles. You should also be aware that in every orange guide, under the Public Safety heading, you will find isolation and evacuation distances that correspond to that specific material. Know that the presence of fire in an incident involving a TIH material will possibly make toxicity factors a lower priority than fire or explosion potential. Pages 14 through 19 in the white pages cover gas pipelines and liquid pipelines and how to identify and or respond to incidents involving these pipelines. Pipelines are often buried when this is the case, there are above-ground structures and signs indicating the presence of underground pipelines. Liquid pipelines carry crude oil, gasoline, diesel fuel, and jet fuel. 
Surface indicators of a liquid pipeline leak include liquids bubbling from the ground, oil slick on flowing or standing water, flames that appear to be coming from the ground, vapor clouds, discolored vegetation or snow, and unusual petroleum, skunk, or rotten egg odor. Gas pipelines carry natural gas. Surface indicators of a gas pipeline leak include a whistling or hissing sound, distinctive strong odor similar to rotten eggs, dense fog, mist, or white cloud, bubbling in water, ponds, or creeks, dust or dirt blowing up from the ground, or discolored or dead vegetation above pipeline right-of-way. These pages are your guide to responding correctly and safely. The notification sequence and requests for technical information beyond what's available in this guidebook should occur in the following order. Notify your dispatcher. If that's not an option, then locate and call the telephone number listed on the shipping paper. If you can't obtain the shipping paper, then contact the appropriate emergency response organization listed on the inside back cover of the guidebook. Keep in mind also that the white pages in the back provide additional resource information on protective clothing, fire and spill control, criminal terrorist use, chemical, biological, and radiological agents, and a glossary of terminology where you can find definitions to names, like previously mentioned polymerization. And finally, on the back inside cover the emergency response telephone number listing. Let's review. Resist rushing in. Position yourself upwind, uphill, or upstream from the hazard, and stay clear of all vapors, fumes, smoke, and spills. When arriving at the scene of an incident, you are expected to recognize the presence of hazmat. Any efforts made to rescue persons, property, or the environment must be weighed against the possibility that you could become part of the problem. Without entering the immediate hazard area, isolate and secure the area. Protect yourself and the public. And above all, do not walk into or touch spilled material. Call for the assistance of trained personnel as soon as conditions permit. Previously, we've referenced Guide 111 when you're unable to discern a starting point. A major exception to this is when you suspect or know that explosives are involved. In those cases, immediately reference Guide 112. If an ID number or name of material cannot be found, but a placard is in sight, find the table of placards in the front white pages, match the placard, and use the orange guide number indicated. Then, go to that orange guide and read the response instructions carefully. If you find the shipping paper first, you will locate the name of the product in the appropriate area. The blue pages are alphabetical by product name. Directly beside the name will be your orange guide number. If the placard is visible and you can locate the ID number in the center, then go to the numerical listing in the yellow pages. Reference the appropriate orange guide number that the material has highlighted. The orange guide and the green pages will inform you on protective actions due to the TIH hazard. In the case of a double orange panel, remember that the top number is the hazard identification code, which identifies the hazard class of the material, and the bottom number is your four-digit identification number. When a single orange panel is present, it will contain the four-digit identification number. The Emergency Response Guidebook is designed for you, the emergency responder. It is one of your most powerful resources to protect and save lives when called to an event involving hazmat. How you react in the first few minutes of an incident can set the stage for the entire outcome of the event, including the risk factors to yourself, the victims who need your aid, and the surrounding public. If used effectively, the ERG will help you quickly interpret the hazard information and give you corrective action steps to influence a successful outcome. Fortunately, our nation has a hazard communication framework designed to support you when you are the first to arrive on a hazmat incident. By understanding the system of placards, labels, and shipping papers, 
and their role in the Emergency Response Guidebook, you can make a successful outcome a reality.